Let's see what happens when I put my foot to the floor. Holy shit! <laughs> Good thing I packed a spare pair of undies. Welcome to Translogic, I'm Jonathan Buckley. This show has seen its fair share of electric vehicles. From homemade rides to top of the line Teslas, EVs are a Translogic staple. But we may have found one to rule them all, performance wise at least. And that's why we're down here in Austin to bring the heat. The Texas heat with the Zombie 222. Oh my gosh, what have I gone and got myself into? <laughs> First off, straight out of the gate, the 68 Fastback is one of my favourite classic cars. Something about old school American muscle just really gets my blood pumping. But then when you take two electric motors in this case at it, producing 1,800 foot-pounds of torque with 800 horsepower and you've got something really, really special. So I'm here with Mitch Medford in the bloodshed, the place where, I guess, the birthplace of the Zombie 222, which was yeah. your brainchild. Where did it come from? So I just went and Googled the words electric dragster, and up came this little car called the White Zombie, which yeah. is a 1972 Datsun 1200. It could do zero to 60 in 1.8 seconds. From that second, I couldn't get the image out of my head of taking a bigger version of what had been done to that little Datsun and putting it in the coolest, most iconic of American muscle yep. cars. Mustangs, they're good cars for this because they're small and lightweight, yep. and, and let's face it, there's nothing more iconic globally than a 67, 68 Mustang yep. Fastback. Did you have a goal in mind when you started work on the project? I wanted to start a company that would do nothing but specialize in converting vintage, iconic cars into supercars. We have to take Detroit metal yeah. and leave the fenders, leave the glass. We can't cheat. We're not going to make a drag car, right? And it's got to be able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with, with supercars and actually outrun them. By the looks of things, it seems that you've achieved your goal. I mean, I, I can see you've got a piece of paper in your hands there, and you're dying to show it to me. <laughs> this is a series of numbers that you achieved at the drag strip. Let's start with your 0 to 60 time. The 0 to 60 time is now 1.94 seconds. This car is quicker Quick. off the line than every, every production supercar in the world. But you've also got some other impressive numbers as well because you ended the Texas mile. 174.2 miles an hour in a street electric car. The wow. previous record had been 155 miles an hour. Yeah. It didn't take but an hour. And yeah. I started getting emails going, 200, you gotta go for 200. Um, we're actually kicking off a Kickstarter right now to try to raise uh, a little bit extra money to help get the car ready for the 200 mile an hour attempt. This car was designed with one thing and one thing only, and that is sheer speed. A zero to 60 time of 1.94 seconds. To put that into perspective, that means that it's technically faster, zero to 60, than a Porsche 918, than a Bugatti Veyron, than a Ferrari La Ferrari. These are million dollar cars. You've gone with a pretty unique configuration, two motors, Mm -hmm. and 1.1 megawatts of power. The battery, yes. The motors and the controllers are capable of doing so much, you have to have a battery pack that can feed those systems. Yep, 800 horsepower, yep. but it's the torque figure that really got me. 1,800 foot-pounds of torque. Yeah. How are you getting that much power? Well, I use DC motors. Very briefly, AC motors are a lot more like turbocharged four-cylinder motors that can rev very, very high, but they don't have as much low-end torque. DC motors are much more like a 1,200 cubic inch V8. They're torque monsters, but you can't rev them very high. So what we decided to do was to keep that unbelievable torque and get me top speed so I can prove to the world that it's not just a quick car, but it's a fast car. Yeah. I use overdrive units. You will get up to a certain speed, say 70, 80 miles an hour, you'll throw into one overdrive, and the car literally will throw you back into the seat again because it's dropped the RPMs way down, yep. and it goes, oh, hello, I've got 1,800 foot-pounds of torque again. again. Let's test the gear vector, shall we? 
Accelerate. And second. Oh, wow. <laughs> but obviously, when you're in a muscle car, you're going to want to do is test to see if it can do a burnout. Here we go <laughs> with the world's quietest burnout. <laughs> oh, and it's still going. Oh, this thing just wants to spin and spin and spin. Well, I think one thing that you guys are doing is that you're, you're, you're taking something which is good for the environment, but you're also showing you can be good for the environment and faster. I've noticed most of the haters come from people who read magazines or just read about things yeah. and have opinions. If you go to a track where a guy has spent hours and hours and thousands of dollars trying to make a car run faster and faster down the track, you know what these guys care about? Speed. Then they go, how much does it cost? <laughs> and speaking of cost, how much does it cost? If you take a vintage car like any one of these Mustangs sitting here and you want it to perform at the level of the 222, which is supercar territory, it's approximately $125,000. Yep. And that's everything, meaning you bring the car and then we do all new suspension, frame reinforcements, the electric drivetrain, battery installations, all the wiring and everything. Having driven the amount of cars that I get to drive in this show, this car has really taken the cake as far as sheer numbers, horsepower, excitement, and just seat of the pants acceleration. I think we're getting 40 to 50 miles range. It seems silly to talk about range in a car like this because it's not designed for range. This is designed for getting 2.24 second quarter miles and 174 mile an hour top speeds and beyond. You're the only the second non-Bloodshed Motors member to ever drive wow. this car. And okay, I, well, but I, I want feeling, you to enjoy it. Tear I'm it up, I'm feeling very privileged. I, I, and once the Zombie 222 hits the Magic 200, is there another project? The Zombie 222 has been breaking electric records. Yep. Now it's time to break records, gas or electric. <laughs> There are very few cars that I've driven that have left me as unsettled in a good way as the Zombie 222. It's so raw and so powerful that it almost verges on madness. That being said though, if this is the future of EVs, then we're looking at a bright and beautiful future. For Translogic, I'm Jonathan Buckley. We'll catch you next time.